when we're naming covalent compounds, which are also referred to as molecules, we are going to see that we're going to use Greek prefixes to do so. But the most important thing for naming is to know what type of compound we are naming. So remember, there's two types of compounds, ionic and covalent. So an ionic compound always has a metal. For example, sodium ion is sodium plus one, and a nonmetal like chloride would be Cl minus one. We are not going to talk about naming these types of compounds yet. We're going to be naming covalent compounds, which consist of two or more nonmetals, like CO or CO2. So we can tell the, when we have a nonmetal compound because the nonmetals are always to the right of the stair steps, and hydrogen, recall, is also a nonmetal. So these are the types of compounds that we've been drawing dot structures for. And to name this, we already basically know the name of CO. We're going to use the Greek prefix mono because there is one oxygen. So this is carbon monoxide. And we don't say monoxide. Uh, anyway, CO2, because there are two oxygens, we call that carbon dioxide. And in order to name covalent compounds, we need to know the Greek prefixes. So the first three we probably know. Mono means one, di means two, tri is three, tetra is four. And that is similar, that Greek prefix also comes from the shape, while well, the tetrahedral molecule, recall, has four atoms bonded to the central atom. So again, tetra means four, penta means five, hexa is six, hepta is seven, octa is eight. So the two T's are right next to each other, so if we remember tri as three, we should know tetra is four, and hexa and hepta, the two H's, go together. And another thing we can use to remember this is the hexa and the word six both have an X. And if we look at what we already know, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, we don't say mono if there's only one of the first atom. So for example, if we were going to name SO3, there's one sulfur, so we don't say monosulfur. We say the entire name of the first atom. So this is sulfur, and because there are three oxygens, we say trioxide. If we have a compound where there's more than one of the first atom, for example here, there are two nitrogens and only one oxygen. So as soon as there's more than one of the first atom, we have to say that. So this is di-nitrogen, and there's only one of the second atom, so we still say monoxide. We always say how many of the second atom there are. And again, if we just look back to what we already know, that's basically uh, a template for us to remind us to use the Greek prefixes as well as state how many of the second atom there are. We could have larger molecules, for example, like N2O4. And again, because there's two nitrogens there, this would be di-nitrogen. And then four oxygens is tetroxide. So we don't say tetraoxide. So usually if there's an oxide, we don't have both vowels there. And there are some larger molecules, for example, like P6Cl7, uh, and I might just be making stuff up here, but six of those would be hexaphosphorus, seven would be heptachloride. What are you talking to? What are you talking to? 